is April 18th. It is time for our Technique Club class. This is a monthly class that I teach here on YouTube, and I am in collaboration with my good friend, Christine Bertram from the United States. So the way it works is if you're from Canada, you can join with me and you can get the card kits. If you're from the United States, you can join with Christine and reach out to Christine and she can get those card kits for you. Um, I just was communicating with her. She messaged me to tell me she has one kit left. So if you're from the United States and you wanna take this class uh, and, and rewatch re the video and get the PDF and the kit, the way to get the PDF and the kit and all the club perks is to reach out to one of us. Um, I'm in Canada. My name is Rose Coleman and my friend and partner in crime is Christine Bertram from the United States. I'm just making sure I am live. I see I've got some people with me. Please be sure to leave me a comment. Um, I'm still getting used to the YouTube live. I'm familiar with Facebook more than YouTube, but um, this is where... Uh, we're at for this class, so hopefully you're here with me and um, I can see if, oh, there we go. Hi, Mary. I can see Mary's comment. Um, remember to go out and like the, the post. If you like the post and share the video with people, this just gets stamping in front of more people and it helps us to grow this community and to share this amazing hobby that we have. Hi, Alexina. Hello, hello. I'm just going to look at my computer here and see if I'm live in the right spot so that I can maybe keep a glance on your computer on my computer. Hi Cindy from Minnesota. Hello, hello. Um, let's see if I can get that chat up on my screen here. Oh, there we go. Okay, I'll turn this down. All right, I can see your comments here on my computer screen. So I'll take a glance every now and then and hopefully I don't miss anything. If I do, I will come back and answer your questions. All right, so let's see here. Okay, so for our Technique Club, I do like to thank everyone that is in the club. You guys are valuable club members. You get all the club perks, which includes the PDF tutorial, um, the kits in the mail, as well as the hostess credits, um, which is you know a, always a great thing, right? Shopping spree, um, half price item. Those are all wonderful things to earn by being in the club. So thank you so much from Christine and I. We both appreciate you all so very much. Okay, I'm going to do a roll call. So for my, my ladies, um, my friends in the United States that have signed up with Christine Bertram, I have your name on the list here. I'm going to read you out to do a roll call. So nice to see you too, Marie. Thank you so much. Twice in one day, yes. <laughs> Saw you earlier on my Facebook Live, and now we're going to jump in and do this technique class. Okay, um, in the United States, we have Carla Lake, Karen Woods, Thaley Mays, uh, Sandy uh, Coy Emery, Shirley Malark Malarkey, Lynn Beasley, Melanie Howe, uh, George, Georgine Darbro, I'm sorry, Darbro, uh, Barbara Rudolph, Christina Heiser, Becky Rower, Angel McClendon, Nicole Herrick, Vicki Rodriguez, Stacy Warner, and Carmen Sanders. And Christine wants me to let you know in the United States she has one kit left. So reach out to Christine Bertram. You can, she'll probably be popping in hopefully today on our, our call here on the, the chat. But if you're looking for Christine, you can find her on her website, Cards by Christine. You can Google and you can see all of her events and you can contact her through her email or messenger. Um, she's on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. She's everywhere. So you can find her, no problem. Hi, Faelene. Just scrolling by to say hello. I'll watch the replay after work. Yes, okay, no problem, Faelene. Thank you for letting me know. We're gonna jump right in here. Uh, my Canadian ladies that have joined with me, thank you all for being here. I appreciate you all so much. Um, I'm gonna do the roll call now. We have Paula Anderson, Kathy um, Clark, Jen Jen, Alexina Walsh, who's here with us today. Hi, Alexina. <laughs> um, France Plamadon, Gail Stefan, uh, Diane Gosselin, Bernice Panchishin, Penny Martin, Joy Gaudette, um, Patricia Benento, Mimi Kung, Don, um, Don McMillan, Penny Lane, Amanda Woods, Kim Baraclow, uh, Debbie Smith, Candace Oliver, Colleen Winter, Kim Campbell, 
Lynn DeBudgel, Aline Ringette, and Cheryl McMillan. Round of applause. Thank you all ladies for joining us. We love having you in the Technique Club. It is so fun to learn new techniques and to better yet, use them going forward with all of your card making, right? Okay, let's flip the camera and point you down at the work surface and we'll get started on these three fun cards. Today, we're gonna to be using the Ice Cream Swirl Bundle from the January to April mini catalog. And this one is a real great bundle. Um, it is carrying over into the annual catalog that we, the new one that we go live with on May 1st. But if you want to get that bundle, um, it's best to get it in April because you're going to save 10% on the bundle price. Um, it will go into the catalog, as I mentioned, but it'll be, uh, they'll be separate products. So you won't save the 10% by buying the bundle. So grab that bundle, grab the kit from Christine or I, I have four kits left as well in Canada. If you're watching the, the replay, uh, just reach out. Today is April 18th, 2024. So reach out. I'm sure Christine's one kit will be gone in no time. And I also have four if anybody would like to join this club and learn something new every single month. I'll explain more as we go. Let me flip the camera now and point you down. I'm going to show you where this uh, kit is in the catalog and talk to you about the PDF and the technique a little bit more. And so let's dive right in. Okay, so we're going to flip the camera. Does that work? Yes. Okay, just bear with me here as I turn you down towards my work surface. There we go. And you can see my hands here. Let's straighten up the camera. There we go. Okay, the bundle we are using, as I mentioned, is called Ice Cream Swirl. And we're going to just make sure you can see me here. Okay, Ice Cream Swirl is photopolymer. I love photopolymer. You can see exactly where you're stamping with photopolymer. And the dies are amazing, you guys. They are so amazing. You can do so much with the, these dies. You can cut out the ice cream cones. You can actually make an ice cream cone folding card with a score line in the middle with this die here. You can take this die and place it inside here and it'll cut out the uh, cr the crosses and, you know, to make it look like a real life um, ice cream cone. And then you can just take it and flip it onto that side and you can snip it in the middle and you got two ice cream cones. Love this one. You got your swirl here. You got the detailed dies for the ice cream as well as the background. So you can make lots of different combinations of ice cream and put your like fudge on and different. I mean, there's a gazillion different flavors of ice cream. So you can make your favorite. No problem with all of the Stampin' Up! colors. We've got sprinkles, strawberries, uh, cherries, as well as the donut dies. And this one right here, which makes a fun, it could be a straw or it could be um, a fun candy, like a Twizzler or whatever your imagination, wherever your imagination takes you, right? So this one is on page 37 of the mini catalog in case you were wondering where it is. The item code is 162771 and you'll save 10% and you'll get both um, the stamps and the dies. And you see how they've even made a little treat container here using that one die I was just telling you about. This one here makes a card that can open. It's a cute little card. Okay, let's jump in here and get started. Okay, so what we have are April 2024 Technique Club. This is what the PDF looks like, you guys. You get all the description, the measurements, everything to make all of these cards. You can put these in a binder and hold on to this beautiful PDF. Members get that. As well, we love to let our members have uh, know exactly how to do the technique and to have a sample. So there, here's a little sample of the technique. So you can store it in a binder. Um, you also get the description at the bottom. I used to, um, ha I've run this club for many, many years and people used to say, I love the technique club, but then I give the card away and I can't remember how to do it. So this is what I've come up with. I do a little description and then a little sample so that if you give your card away, you'll still have the ideas, right? And then you can go ahead and use those ideas with, other stamps and dyes and ink and everything. So um, it's always a great um, thing to learn new techniques. I love, love, love new, learning new techniques. Okay, let's get started. The first card we're gonna do is from your pecan pie uh, card base. So this is what the card's gonna look like. We're gonna jump right into the technique. So this one is our Make-A-Wish card. It's on a pecan pie um, card base and your card envelope should look like this. 
And inside you're going to, let me just open it up and pull out the pieces and show you what we've got here. So we've got a piece of the Fluid 100 watercolor paper that Stampin' Up! sells, and that has been cut using this die right here. This is the um, big part of the ice cream, and we're gonna do our technique on here. So inside you're gonna have some, some uh, embellishments, you're going to have a little bit of that polka dot trim, and you've got a die cut here for your cherry. And there's that ice cream cone that was run through the die cut machine, a stamp and cut and boss machine with both the outline and the inside. So remember when I was showing you the die like this? Hi, Becky. Hello, hello. Thank you for joining us. Um, it's going to look like this, okay? So this is what happens. You can get two when you run this this through your stamp and cut and boss machine. So we've got our, our really lifelike looking uh, ice cream cone and then you're going to have two pieces of basic white four by five and a quarter okay so let's move all these little parts off to the side let me just pop them inside here so I don't lose them we're going to work on the technique is actually on our ice cream part it's going to be on the um the fluid 100 paper so we're going to do some embossing so I've got the swirl here and the technique is called re inker spread or ink refill spread, whichever way you want to say it. I call it re-inker. So we're going to use a re-inker for this technique. But the first thing we want to do is we're going to emboss these this swirl image onto our Fluid 100 paper. So I'm going to use my Versamark ink pad. And I'm going, oops, I'm going to, I actually have like to put my images with the image pointing up and I ink from the top when um, I've got a big image. So the Versamark ink pad is smaller than my ice cream. So I'm just gonna tap it like this from the top and get it all nice and inked up with Versamark. And then we're gonna just hover over this um, die cut and then stamp that right on top like that. And it'll be sticky. That's the nature of Versamark ink. It's supposed to be sticky because that's how it's gonna hold the powder. So we'll just move that off to the side cover my Versamark pad. Can you see how clean that is? That's how your Versamark pad looks when it's new. <laughs> um, even if yours gets all mucky and gets ink on it, don't worry. It's As long as it stays sticky, it still works. But this is Versamark pad. It's a watermark ink pad and it is supposed to be used. Um, you can use it for watermarking, which gives you a tone on tone look on your cardstock, but it also is strong enough to hold our embossing powder. And I know I'm talking, but it will still stick. So let's um, just bring in our tray here and we're going to bring in our, whoops, my brush fell off. Oops. There's my brush to funnel all my powder back into my canister. We've got white emb embossing powder and I didn't use the embossing buddy, but I probably should have. I'm just excited to get started. <laughs> this embossing buddy comes with your embossing kit and what the purpose of it is, is to dissipate any static or any um, thing that's going to interfere with your stamping. So you should do that before you get started. I've already jumped the gun and stamped mine. So let's go ahead. I'm going to use the reverse tweezers to hold on to my ice cream image. I'm going to take the, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to hold this with my left hand. I'm going to take the canister of powder and I'm just going to gently pour it right over and tap that off in the tray. And you can see then if there's any areas that didn't get powder. I'm going to hold this close to the camera so you can see. In case you've never embossed before, you maybe just found me here on YouTube and um, never seen this before, but this is embossing powder. So if you can see, I'm holding it close to the camera. It's actually just like a sand, right? It just looks dry and sandy and nothing really happens. The magic doesn't happen until we apply the heat, right? So I'm just gonna lay that down gently on my work surface. Then I'm gonna take my tray and there is a little hole here at the bottom of the tray. I'm gonna gently tilt the tray over my canister. I'm just gonna tap the sides to funnel that embossing powder back into the canister. And then you can also take your brush and you can brush all the remaining granules down into your canister. And this is how you um, conserve your embossing powder and it will last you for a very, very long time. Okay, so we're done with that. We're done with the brush. I'll move that off to the side. Now all I need is my heat tool. So I'm gonna turn on my heat tool. So pardon the noise, it's gonna get a little loud. 
um, but we have to turn on the heat to what, what I'm essentially going to do is heat this powder and it will become a liquid, but it's going to dry right away. Okay. So I'm going to hold it as close as I can to the camera. I pardon me for the noise, but I just really want you to see the effect of this. The metallics, the gold, the silver are really dramatic. This is white on uh, fluid 100, but that's okay. Um, you can still, if you look closely, I think you can still see the effect. So here we go. I'm gonna turn this on and get it heating up and see if you can see when that powder turns. It's starting to go on the side there. Okay, and then we're just gonna follow the heat tool around. Can you see it happening? It's gonna tilt it a little bit. Maybe you can see the shine. There we go, we've got the top part done and coming around to the bottom. All right, let's see, I think I've got it. Let's turn off my heat gun. Always remember to unplug your heat gun. Don't ever leave it plugged in in your craft room. It could be a nasty accident. Um, if it accidentally got bumped onto the floor and turned the knob on, just a little safety announcement. <laughs> okay, so here's our um, ice cream. Now, I did have my tweezer right there, so I do have a little cut in mind. So let me just see if I can fix that. Just gonna heat that up make sure that I got it all. Okay, we're happy. I'm happy with that. I'm going to turn off my heat tool. And this is what we're going to be working with. So we have our white embossing powder on top, heat it up. It's shiny. If you hold it in the light, you can see the shine. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in um, my silicone mat here and I'm going to put this on here. So I'm just gonna lay that down here and we're going to use pecan pie. So we're making like a chocolatey kind of caramelly uh, soft serve. So we're gonna use pecan pie. And what I'm gonna do is just use the dropper, the reinker, and I'm gonna put a couple of drops in that little chamber right there. Okay, and put my lid on. Then we're gonna use a spritzer, a stamp and spritzer. This is a spritzing tool that holds water and we can then you know, you can sprit. There's a lot of techniques you can do with spritzers, so they're definitely a good investment in your crafting supplies. We're also going to use a water painter. This is a paint brush that has water in the barrel. <coughs> oh my goodness! Excuse me. I'm so sorry. I don't know where that sneeze came from. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. Okay, this is a water painter. As I mentioned, there's water inside the barrel, and it's goes against the grain you don't it's not the it's not righty tighty lefty loosey loosely oh my goodness I butchered that but anyway you have to turn it the opposite way that you would your mind would think that it goes to get this open and I'm just going to use this to funnel a little couple of drops in this chamber right there I just want a little tiny bit of water and then here we go we're going to put this back on and take the lid off Oh, thank you, Becky. <laughs> and what we're going to do now is we're going to use both of these tools together for this technique. So I'm going to take my spritzer. I'm going to spritz right over top of the ice cream. And I'm going to just see if I can zoom in a little bit here. Maybe you can see a bit closer. Okay, so there's my ice cream with the white embossing. So we're going to take the spritzer. Make sure you've got the nozzle pointed at your project, okay? And we're going, <laughs> thanks, Kathy. We're going to spritz this real good. And this is the reason I'm using the Fluid 100 paper because it is, the purpose for of Fluid 100 paper is to for water coloring, right? So if you can see in the light, each of those uh, channels, if you will, on the ice cream swirl is a separate compartment. And you can see that water, there we go. You can see the water pooling. So that is our advantage for this reinker spread. So what we want to do, if it dries, I'm in Alberta and it's super dry here, so sometimes I do have to come in and add a little extra water. I'm going to take my painter, my water painter, I'm going to dip into that pecan pie ink. I've got a little tiny bit on the tip of my 
painter and I'm going to touch the surface tension. I hope I, I can show you here. So the surface tension and you'll see, there we go, it's starting to flow. When you touch the surface tension, it should go through the water. The, it should just, yeah, it should just trail along, okay? So this is the re -inker. Whoa, there you go. You can see that one. That, one's, that one was dramatic. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> um, so touch the surface tension of each of those pools of water. And this is the, the important part about this technique to remember is to choose a stamp that has a prominent um, border. Okay, so the ice cream swirl, when I saw it, I was like, oh, that's going to work great for reinker spread because the ink, you want it to spread in the chambers, if you will. These are individualized um, compartments. So if you have a stamp that doesn't have actual solid lines, um, you, it, it'll still work, but it just won't be as prominent as you see here with the ice cream. So you can imagine you can make different colors. You could do uh, bubble bath, uh, re -inker. I did pump, uh, pecan pie to try to make it look like caramel or chocolate ice, um, ice cream. You could use early espresso if you wanted to. Really, anything goes, as I mentioned, with ice cream. You could do soft sea foam and make yourself some pistachio ice cream. Anything goes, as I mentioned. So we're just going to let that dry um, here on this um, platform. And you can also use the heat tool to speed up the drying process, right? So, but that white embossing powder or the white heat embossing is going to keep everything in its own little compartment and make it still look like ice cream, okay? So if we didn't do the embossing and we used a uh, regular water-based classic ink, the ink would bleed, okay? So we're using the embossing um, to for our benefit for that. Okay, so here I'm, I'm gonna take my um, water painter. I'm just gonna use a baby wipe and just wipe that ink off. You could also just squeeze the barrel and get the water to flow down through the bristles, right? You could do that as well. So that's the technique right there. We're going to let that just sit and dry. Uh, depending on how much water you use, of course, it will be the timing for the drying process. And you can also, if you want to speed it up, you could also take a um, paper towel and you can also come in with Thanks, Lynn. I'm happy you like that. Thanks, Denise. Um, I do have a little extra piece of paper towel here. I'm just going to come in with the paper towel. And if you just touch the puddle, then it'll just absorb some of that extra, um, extra water. And I really like using the paper towel because I find sometimes the heat tool will leave um, puddles like... It's not as smooth of a look. So I do like to come in and kind of just like gently blot up any extra water like that. All right, so there we go. I love the two-tone effect of that one. Okay, we're just going to move this off to the side and we'll work on the rest of the card here. Okay, let me just zoom back out for you. Will lighter the color too? Yes, it'll light. The color will will go lighter as it dries. Yep, absolutely. And it's watercolor paper. Like the Fluid 100 paper is very forgiving. You know, you could probably even go back and spritz it again and and add more color to your ice cream if you're not happy with the dried, uh, the dried look. And look, I've got pecan pie all over my fingers. <laughs> oh, inky fingers! It's all par par for the course, right? Okay. Let's go back to the card base. Let's bring in all the pieces here. We've got pecan pie card base, and we're gonna do a little stamping. Let's do the front first. So we're gonna grab one of the pieces of white right here, and we're gonna do some stamping along the edges. So I've got my sprinkle stamps here. Um, it just looks like sprinkles that you would put on an uh, ice cream sundae. And we're gonna bring in petal pink ink. So we're gonna bring in some petal pink. And we're going to stamp the edges of this one. Just go all the way around the edges of this piece of basic white. And I'm stamping off the edge. You can turn your stamp as well, get a different look, flip it around. Anything goes. We're just adding that nice little pop of petal pink to the edges of the card base, or the card front, I should say. 
All right, so there we go. We've got that. Now we're gonna just, what else? Okay, so we're gonna put this right onto the card base. Let's, or, that's not the card base. We're gonna put this right onto pecan pie. So let me grab my bone folder and we're going to reinforce that score line. There we go. Okay, so now we're gonna add our glue to the background, the, this card front. Okay, and there we go. I like pecan pie with the petal pink. It looks very sharp together. I find it's a nice soft color, petal pink. Okay, so there's that. Now we're gonna take our ice cream cone and we can just glue that down right here. So easy. I love, as I mentioned before, that you can get two of these ice cream cones out of one die cut. One run through the die. If you want the, what you could do is run it through with the, the etching, right? This die right here, it gives the details. And then the other one would be plain and you could use it, the stamp. You can stamp the details from the stamp set. So lots and lots of options for this one. Okay, so now we're gonna grab the trim. I wanted to add a little accent down here. And the best way to add this trim is to bring in tear and tape. Tear and tape is super strong. So let's go ahead and add a little pop of that. Thank you, Alexina. You think this one's cool? I love this technique. I think it's fun. This reinker spread. So I challenge you to look at all the stamps you have in your collection and see which ones you could use with this. And I bet I bet you have a lot. All right, so we're gonna put that down like that. And then we're going to, oh, I'm just keeping an eye on my ice cream here. So I'm gonna bring it back into the screen. It's still a little bit wet, but let's just go ahead and give it a little zap with the heat tool. See if I can get that to, to dry. And you can see the look then of how it looks with drying it with the heat tool. You see the water wants to move around. Can you see that? That little droplet of water is just like, no, I don't want to go. <laughs> so it's a little bit of a different look when you do this, but I wanted, I wanted to show you what it looks like when you use the heat tool to speed things up. So then you can decide with your own kits. Um, okay, stop. Sorry, you guys. I know my hand was in the camera, but I want to show you what it looks like so that you can decide. Sometimes patience is a, a virtue, right? No, it's always a virtue. What am I kidding? <laughs> um, I recommend letting it air dry because, let me hold this close and show you what happens. When you use the heat gun to um, speed it up, sometimes you get little ridges where the ink is, where the ink in the water, like down here, you get like water spots. So if you don't mind that, then you can go ahead and speed up the process by using your heat tool. And we're just doing that today just you know, to show you the effect. Now this one, my sample, I let it air dry on its own. And I find it very interesting that I use the same pecan pie refill, ink refill, and I actually see some petal pink coming through here. I didn't use pink, petal pink, but there must be some pinky undertones in that, um, in that reinker, right? So I love the different effects. No two ice creams are gonna be the same, right? <laughs> so we can go ahead now. I really like the look of this one too. It looks really yummy. So we're gonna go ahead and flip that over and we'll grab our dimensionals and we'll put a few of those on the back. That Fluid 100 paper is amazing. It's definitely the way to go. You wanna stock up on that paper because once you learn new techniques, you're gonna to wanna to make lots and lots of different things with a Fluid 100 paper. Okay, so there's our ice cream on the top like that. And then we're gonna stamp Make-A-Wish right here with pecan pie. So let's bring in my pecan pie ink. Marie says, love that technique, who combines my two crafty passions, water coloring and card making. Yes, yes, exactly. You can do both, right? Love it. Okay, so we're gonna stamp make a wish right there. And then we have a little cherry die cut that was in your kit right here. So we're gonna grab that little stamp, the cherry stamp and memento ink. And we're gonna stamp that right on top. 
So tap, tap, tap with the memento, and then we'll just hover over the die cut and stamp. And there's our cherry. All right, so then to add color to the cherry, I'm gonna bring in cherry cobbler and shaded spruce. So we'll just add a little pop of color here to the cherry and a little tiny little green on the stem. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna pop this onto the top. I'm gonna leave this with, I'm gonna add this with um, liquid glue so I don't make my card any thicker. So you can actually come in and just put the glue right on top of the ice cream if you wanna do it that way and then take your cherry and, I didn't wanna put it right on the top because I want it to be able to fit in the envelope. So we're just kind of popping that cherry right down into the soft serve like that. All right, <laughs> excuse me. We're gonna take our, dimension, our uh, bling and put one on top of the trim and then we're just gonna take the other two and put them in the white space up here, okay? So there's the front of the card. Now the inside of the card, for the inside, we're gonna grab our white piece here, our basic white piece, and we're gonna stamp how, hope your day is sweet. And we're gonna grab that one. I'm gonna show you a little trick you can do with this stamp as well. Hope your day is sweet. So sometimes I do like to cut my stamps, but I'm not gonna do that today. We're gonna keep the stamp as it is, but we are gonna get two colors. There's a few different ways that you can add different colors to your stamp. You can use stamp and write markers and you could ink up one part of the stamp with a marker and then ink up the other part. But I found a way to do this using our ink pad. So we're gonna use both colors of my feature colors here. And we're gonna just take this stamp and we're going to, I'm going to use the bottom edge of the stamp and I'm going to ink up Hope Your Day Is. So you can see, I don't know, hopefully you can see through the camera. I'm just inking that up here on the edge. So Hope Your Day Is with Pecan Pie. Then I'm going to turn my stamp and I'm going to do the same thing with Petal Pink. But then I'm going to just tap the word Sweet into my Petal Pink ink pad. And then be kind of quickly, uh, we're going to try and be quick, stamp that because it's water-based, so it's going to dry. So there we go. So you can see how I've got two different colors. The Hope Your Day is sweet, but they're different colors by just using the uh, stamp on the edge of your ink pad. Okay, so then to tie in those cherries, I'm just going to bring back that cherry stamp. And we're going to add a couple of those to the inside of the card. All right, hi Denise, welcome to the party from Winnipeg. <laughs> Good to have you with us. Okay, so we're gonna do two cherries. I was just looking at my sample. So we can add two cherries right there. And then of course, just do your pop of color to both. The same as you did on the front, easy peasy. You can even add these to your envelope as well. That's always fun to add little pops of color um, to your envelope. I always guarantee that your, your card will be open before the bills in the mail <laughs> if you stamp the envelope, right? It's always nice to have pretty envelopes. Okay, so we've got our, our glue, our multi-purpose adhesive on there, and we're gonna pop this inside. And there, my friends, is the Technique card. The Technique is called Reinker Spread. And here is what you will get with your kits. This is a sample. This is the, we're using the donut. I used the donut and I embossed it with white. And then I did a reinker spread with um, some um, lemon lolly and, or daffodil delight and some fresh freesia um, to color the stripes on the donut. So everybody's looks different, but um, again, you get your description so that you can always know how to do these techniques in your binder. Okay, there's our first card. Let's move on to our next card. Our next card, all the cards feature the ice cream swirl. So the next one we're gonna do is our real red card. So you wanna grab your package with the real red card base inside. This is the card we're gonna be making. This one right here, do you recognize the paper? This is the paper that came out in an online exclusive very recently. This is the Lava Latte paper, designer series paper. So it's not just a latte swirl or a coffee swirl. It can also be ice cream. So that's what's in your kit. And we're going to do this card. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into our card package. We've got real red card base. 
Inside, you're going to have some of those holiday uh, festive rhinestones here. So don't just make sure you don't lose them because they're so tiny, they may want to fly away. You've got two strawberries here, two strawberry die cuts. Got a piece of real red. There's that ice cream swirl on the background. We have our little um, images for coffee beans. That's a beautiful paper. And this pe paper here, I'm not sure if you recognize it. It came from the Be Mine collection, right? That's still available. Grab some of that. It's beautiful paper. Okay, and we've got our white and our pecan pie layers. All right, so the first thing we're going to do for this card is we're going to stamp the front edges with the strawberry stamp and memento ink okay so let's grab our memento and we'll grab our stra strawberry image i'm just going to kind of go around the sides our just a little bit of pre-information here like you know just to show you this piece of designer series paper is going to go on the left so you don't need to worry about stamping any strawberries because we'll be covering them up so you just want to come over here and just kind of add some strawberries turn your stamp make it look you know, like um, continuous, but not exactly the same. I'm turning my strawberry. You can even turn your strawberry upside down. Just make it look whimsical. And there we go. So we've got strawberries on the outside edge like that. And then you wanna definitely, if you have the glass mat, you're gonna wanna grab your chamois cloth and wipe up that ink. Oh, and my chamois cloth, look how hard it is. I forgot to rinse it before the video. I guess I won't be wiping anything with my chamois cloth. I'll have to grab a baby wipe instead. <laughs> the chamois cloth is very much the same as our chamois, only it's a cloth, but you have to remember to make it, make sure you rinse it <laughs> so that you can use it. All right, so we've got that done. Our background strawberry stamping is done. And now we're gonna bring in our glue and we're gonna glue down the uh, red piece. Now, look at those adorable bumblebees. You could put those on the outside too if you wanted to, but I wanted to keep mine kind of monochromatic with all the red. So I'm just using the red side here with these little tiny white flowers, which reminds me of strawberry flowers, right? If you've ever grown strawberries, I like to grow my strawberries in a container um, on my deck because then I can move them around. They like to be in the heat, right? So, and sometimes, um, does the baby wipe leave fibers? The ones I have are the ones, no, they don't, these don't leave fibers and I like to buy the unscented ones as well. Um, no, I use them all the time, baby wipes. I, I joke with my husband, I'm like, I use more baby wipes now that we don't have babies. <laughs> um, but yeah, you'd have to experiment and try different ones. But um, yeah, I do keep them because I tend to get my hands pretty dirty. So I use them mostly for just you know, getting the ink off my fingers, but they do come in handy for other stamping things, like when you forget to rinse your chamois. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna use now, we've got two pieces of white. So the bigger one is for the inside, and then the smaller one is gonna be layered onto the pecan pie layer. So we're gonna do some stamping on here. Now, I've given you this die cut here, and it's quite big, right? We've got a big swirl on our ice cream. So that's gonna go right here um, like this, and we want to stamp our ice cream cone at the bottom. So I've got my ice cream cone on my block here. I'm gonna stamp it with pecan pie. Let me grab my pecan pie again. And we're going to ink that up like this. Tap, tap, tap. And then I'm gonna stamp down here. And I, I know I have to go off. It's a big ice cream cone, right? So. I know I have to go off the edge of my card, so I'm gonna go like so, like that. And then you can see where you're gonna put the ice cream. So I wanna make sure that I don't cut off the top of my ice cream, so there we go. We're gonna just lay this down gently for now, and then I'll just wipe up my... If you're, if you're stamping on your grid paper, you don't need to worry about wiping. I'm just getting it off the glass, because otherwise it'll end up, end up on my hands. <laughs> So now what you can do, I know that my ice cream is gonna cover up this much of the cone. So I'm just gonna bring in my blends and I have both pecan pie and crumb cake. I'm gonna add a pop of color because that cone looks pretty pale there, right? And cones are not white. So we're just gonna add a little bit of pecan pie. You can come along the, the lines here if you want and do it on a diagonal like that. 
And then you can also use crumb cake to add a little bit more color and to blend it all in. It's really no right or wrong way to do it. Um, it's totally up to you. Now, I think I've grabbed, yeah, this is dark crumb cake, but that's okay. I can still make it work. Um, cones are different shades as well, right? So don't sweat. Just add your crumb cake and your pecan pie and add that nice color. All right, so the, here we go. We've got our cone. We'll finish up coloring here. Okay, and then we'll put the lids, don't forget to put lids back on your blends because they are alcohol-based and they will dry out super fast. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my cone and put that right there and we're gonna trim off the edges. So I'm just gonna add my glue to the background and put that in place. And then we're going to flip it over. I'm gonna bring in my scissors and trim off that Huggies Unscented Pure Water from Dollarama. Yep, there you go, see? There's tons of brands of baby wipes you can use. There you go. Okay, so there's our, our ice cream. We're just trimming off that edge, and there we go. So we ha have this banner here that we can, we're gonna stamp. This is gonna be a thank you card. So I've got the word thanks on my block here, and we're gonna stamp on here with memento. All right, so. I, if you're wondering the brand that I use, mine are from Costco. Um, they look like this, Kirkland Baby Wipes, fragrance free. That's the ones that I use and I find they have worked, they work really, really well as well. Okay, so we're gonna just stamp on my red banner here. Okay, and I'm gonna stamp kind of towards the right and then I'm gonna bring in, oh boy, so sad. This stamp, this punch is leaving, okay? So you can banner punch your stamp, your punch, your your piece of cardstock in many different ways. You can use your scissors and just cut a banner, or you can bring in your punch and slide that into the track and give it a punch. Like that. Okay? So there's my little thanks. Got that punched out. And we're going to pop that on dimensionals. But first, I'm gonna go, go ahead and mount this onto my pecan pie layer. Let's bring in that layer here. Love it. Love, love, love this. Okay, so this is gonna be on, um, I'm not gonna pop this up. This is gonna be glued right on the front of my card with my multi-purpose glue or your seal, whatever it, your favorite adhesive is. And we're not popping anything up yet because uh, I'm gonna pop up those strawberries and my banner is gonna be popped up. So didn't wanna make the card too, too thick. So this banner is gonna go right here like this. So we're gonna add some dimensionals to the back of this one, like so. But before I put that down, I'm gonna grab the stamp. All of these stamps are from the Ice Cream Swirl. Let me bring that in and show you. We're using every stamp except for the little straw one, this one right here. Um, so here we've got thanks and I'm gonna do for everything. And for that one, I'm gonna bring in the coordinating Real Red, Real Red ink. And we're going to stamp that down here at the bottom. So it's gonna say thanks for everything. So let me stamp that right there. And then we can position the thanks right above it. And you can go flush with the the pecan pie if you'd like that look. There we go. All right, I'm happy with that. Okay, so now let's do those gorgeous little strawberries. We've got our two strawberry die cuts here. And if you find it hard to stamp on glass or on your uh, white uh, grid paper, I love to bring in the silicone mats, my favorite background, so I can see what I'm doing. We'll put my strawberries on my silicone mat, and I'm gonna grab my strawberry stamp and my memento ink, and we're gonna go ahead and stamp right on top here. Try not to get my head in the camera. Stamp straight down and straight up. So there's one strawberry and two. All right, so now we're gonna color the strawberries. And I got some tips for you on coloring these strawberries as well. So I'm gonna bring in Cherry Cobbler and Flirty Flamingo. 
and we're going to have, let's do the leaves first. So I have some uh, shaded spruce. So let's add a little pop of green to, the sh to those strawberries. Easy peasy. And then we're gonna grab the cherry cobbler and I'm just gonna kind of outline the edge of this strawberry a little bit, just on the edges. Oh, I missed a leaf. <laughs> okay, so, and my blend is fuzzy. It's getting fuzzy there. I've used this one a lot. Okay, so I'm just going back, adding a little bit more green. And then I've left the center of the strawberries uh, white so that I can bring in my flirty flamingo and just blend, 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 blend. So add your flirty flamingo, but then go over the edge where you see your red touching the flirty, go over that and then you can get that nice two-tone shaded. I'll hold it a little closer so you can see. That's how I shaded mine. I did the edge with cherry cobbler and then I did flirty flamingo and then just blended it in and add, you can see from the camera, there's a little bit of light spots there. So play with your blends, play with different colors and blend them together because you can get lots of really fun looks. Okay, flip them over. We're gonna add a dimensional to each strawberry and we're gonna pop these guys up. Okay, so we're gonna put one right here on that chocolate ice cream. Oh, so yummy. And then we'll put the other one down here like that. And then we're gonna bring in our bling and we're gonna add bling to the ice cream or to the card. Let me grab my take your pick tool and we're gonna add one, um, one over here, over here, and the third one I'm gonna put down here. There we go. So there's the front of the card. Now the inside of the card, for the inside we're gonna say, um, hope your day is sweet. Hope your day is sweet and on this big piece of white here. So let's go ahead and bring that in. We're gonna stamp with Memento. And I need to bring back that strawberry again. So hope your day is sweet. We need the ink pad, not the lid. <laughs> okay, hope your day is sweet. And then we'll add another strawberry down here in the corner. And we'll bring back those colors of blends and add a pop of color to that strawberry. And again, you wanna stamp your strawberries on your envelope. It makes a difference. Nice, sweet envelope. So I'm just adding some cherry cobbler to the edges of my strawberry, knowing that I'm gonna bring back my, um, Sandy says, don't forget to give a thumbs up. Thank you, Sandy, yes, thank you so much. I think you have to go out to the main part of, um, uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I think that's what you mean, right? You have to go out to the main part of YouTube and give a thumbs up, appreciate that so much. All right, so. We are going to go, I'm sad that these are retiring too, Denise. Um, the festive, festive rhinestones, I think that's what they're called. Festive pearls, yes, festive pearls are retiring. So grab those, you guys, you get 200 of them in a package. So you definitely want to, um, to grab more of those before the catalog retires on April 30th. All right, we're just putting this on the inside of the card. And there we go. We got another card done. What do you think? Do you like it? It's a sweet strawberry card. Okay, so there we go. We've got those done. Now our third card is our Azure Afternoon card. So let me just grab my card base here. So it's your envelope with the Azure Afternoon card base. And this is what the card looks like. We've got a yum yum on the front. Now to, for this one, we are going to use um, the stamp, just the stamp with early espresso. And then there's the inside. We're gonna do that technique again with Azure Afternoon and Fresh Freesia. Okay, so let's get started on this one. So in this card package, you're going to have a Zero Afternoon card base. Be careful when you open this up, so you've got all your little bits in here. You've got your bling from the, this is from the Hot Air Balloon Suite, the bling. These are amazing bling, you guys. I call them bling, that's just my, that's just how I call it. <laughs> um, these are the rainbow adhesive backed um, embellishments. 
All right, so for this one, we need the stamp that says yum yum. Yes, indeed. And we've got a little piece of crumb cake here. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use early espresso ink. Okay, let me close up my real red ink pad. And I'm trying to see, do I need, I don't need my pecan pie, I'm done with pecan. Let's close that one up too, so I don't put my hand in it. <laughs> All right, so yum, yum. We're going to stamp like this. A yum. And then another yum. So even though they're stacked, we're going to separate them out like that. And then we're just going to snip these into little rectangles and put them on dimensionals for the front of our card. So easy, right? Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm just going to use my scissors and snip them out can make them smaller if you want. Let's see, like that, and like that, okay. There we go, so we've got them. Let's make this one about the same size. Snip them out. All right, so get rid of our little extra bits here, and let's see. Yeah, maybe a little bit more off of this one. Snip, snip. Okay, so then I'm gonna grab a dimensional, put on the bottom of these, get them ready to go here. And let's see if we can fit a big one. Yes, a big one fits, one there. All right, we're starting right from the greeting here, but that's okay. What I like to do is just get all that part done and then I can actually stick these on my silicone mat so they, they will be ready for me when I'm ready to use them. All right, actually, we bring back that silicone mat because we're going to stamp our swirls here on our ice cream. So we have a pool party. We're going to do some tone on tone stamping. So we've got pool party ink. Thank you, Jenna. Thank you. So good to see you here with us. I'm happy you like these cards. I had a blast creating these cards. Such a fun bundle. Definitely a keeper. All right, I'm looking for my ice cream stamp. It has disappeared. <laughs> my swirl stamp. Oh, it's over here. I used it with Versamark, but I'm just gonna use my baby wipe to get that sticky Versamark off. Now, if I didn't clean it, it wouldn't be the end of the world because it's clear. It's not gonna ruin my ink pad, right? But always get in the habit of cleaning your stamps. Okay, so we're inking up with Pool Party on Pool Party, tone on tone. Stamp straight down, and there we go. We've got a pool party swirl. And then I'm gonna grab my chamois cloth and we're gonna clean that pool party off. And we're gonna stamp fresh freesia on fresh freesia. Easy peasy. All right, fresh freesia. Here we go. Grab the second swirl, and did you know that the the die that cuts this out you can actually cut through two pieces of cardstock at one time so you could cut your pool party and your fresh freesia at the same time um, because it's just an edge stamp or an edge die right it's not it doesn't have all the details like intricate cuts so you can totally do that and save time all right there's our fresh freesia and we're going to clean this one up my chamois cloth or my chamois not the chamois cloth. My chamois cloth is dry as a bone. <laughs> we already determined that. Okay, so now what else do we have to stamp? We have to stamp this ice cream cone. So that's the plain ice cream cone that was just die cut. It doesn't have any of the intricate cuts in it, but I just want to show you that you can actually just use your ice cream stamp with early espresso and then same idea, hover over your image and stamp straight down and straight up there we go so there's our ice cream image easy peasy let's see what else do i need here do i need the early espresso no i'm going to close that guy up put that off to the side and we're going to glue these together so we're actually going to just move this off to the side for a second and bring in the other parts of the card so those stamping pieces are done Let's bring in the card base. So we have Azure Afternoon as our card base. We have a piece of Fresh Freesia that's gonna be centered on the card. And then we have a piece of designer series paper that's gonna go like that. 
um, all the way top and bottom with that little bit of fresh freesia poking out the sides. Isn't that a fun way to display the, t the DSP? And I thought this was really a fun, um, fun idea to just have a little bit of that fresh freesia sticking out. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this down onto my card base. Whoops, my lid is wanting to fly around here. Okay, so we're going to just see here. So we're center the fresh freesia like that. And then we're going to go ahead and put the DSP down. Come on, ink or glue, don't fail me now. This one is running out. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> but there's still lots in there. You know, the multi-purpose glue does play tricks, right? It, it makes you think that it's running out. And then when you're about to throw it in the trash, it decides, no, I got more. But I think this one is actually toast. Okay, moving on. Let's grab a new one. No time to waste. <laughs> okay, so there we go. We've got glue, lots of glue on that one. All right, so we're going to put this, position it right over top of that fresh freesia. And anchor that down. Okay, I love the polka dots. It looks like sprinkles. Okay, so now we can position our ice cream here. So again, the ice cream cone, like if I were to put these all together, like stack them, they would go off the top of the cart. We don't want that, right? So here's what I would do. I would suggest putting the two scoops of ice cream together first. So let's put some glue on the fresh freesia. Then we'll put our pool party on top. So we got a double decker going on here. Oh, on my other card, I put pool party, put fresh freesia on top. So it doesn't really matter, right? Some days you might want pool party on top, pistachio on top. Some days you might want fresh freesia. Now with this one, um, I don't even think I'm going to have to trim my ice cream, you guys. I think I'm going to be able to get away with it. But it, it depends on how much uh, gap you put between your scoops, right? If you're going to have to trim the bottom of your ice cream. So my sample, I did have to trim the bottom. But I think this one's going to be okay. So let's go ahead and add our glue to the cone. Come down here and put the cone right flush with the bottom. And then we'll add our glue to the cones, or the scoops, I mean. The scoops. Actually it doesn't look like scoops. It looks like soft serve, right? It looks like it came out of the machine that way. A scoop would be more rounded, wouldn't it? Just That just dawned on me. <laughs> okay, so there's our scoop, our our ice cream cone. Mint ice cream, my favorite, Jenna. Yes, 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 absolutely. Mint and with chocolate bits. Yes, that would be so yummy. I could taste it right now. <laughs> okay, so then you put your yum yum on your ice cream. I'll bring in my other one so you can see the difference. And then we can put a few little candies on here, little candy sprinkles on here um, from our bling. Sprinkle those around. And maybe we'll put this one down on the purple, on the fresh freesia. Okay, so there's the front. And let's move on to the inside. So the inside, we've got a piece of basic white here. We're going to bring in that stamp again, the one that says, hope your day is sweet. Let's clean that one up. Now this one, we're going to use um, fresh freesia and azure afternoon the same way. So let's bring in those ink pads. And we'll do Azure Afternoon with the top. And then the sweet will be with Fresh Freesia. So again, hold your ink pad. I find it easier to hold the ink pad in my hand and then take the stamp and then just press it on the edge like that. Ha hope your day is. And then sweet. We're going to press the sweet into the ink pad like that. And we'll stamp that in the middle of our basic white. There we go. Hope your day is sweet. And then I wanted to use the donut because it's a super cute donut. We're going to stamp a donut. Why not? Why not? Stamp a donut. There we go. We'll stamp that donut right there. And then we're going to bring in some color. We can add some icing to the donut. Let's add pool party. A couple of strips of pool party. One here and one over here. And then the other ones we'll do with bubble bath. Yum, yum. Anything goes. You could use pecan pie and had a chocolate ice cream. I mean, just about all of our Stampin' Up! colors would work, right? Okay, 
let's go ahead and add our glue to here. A little bit of glue. When you're working with just a single sheet of basic white, you don't want to add too, too much glue because it will dry and it will show ripples through and you don't want that. So make sure just a tiny bit of that liquid glue goes a long way. And there we have it, my friends. We have another adorable, yummy, yummy, yum, yum ice cream card. Super easy and lots of fun to make. You can make a bunch of these in no time. Okay, so there's that card. Let's bring back our thank you card. Thanks for everything with hope your day is sweet and the strawberry. And then our last but not least, our technique card. We did make a wish with our fluid 100 paper and the technique is called reinker spread. I am excited to try different uh, reinkers and make different ice creams um, using the watercolor paper and the water painter the spritzer, all of the tools, right? The technique tools that you definitely will use time and time again in your stamping because um, it is so much fun to play with water, watercolor paper and to play with the water painters and the spritzers. And this is just another bundle, another sweet, another bundle, sorry, the ice cream swirl bundle is just another bundle that you can take it up a notch with our techniques. So I hope you like these cards. Thank you so much for your comments. I'm just going to flip you back around. Whoop. <laughs> and make sure I don't break my mount here. Turning you back around. Thank you so much. Thank you, Maria. Thank you so much. I had a blast, you guys. I want to thank you from the bottom of my, of my heart for being a part of this today. Um, I always love to see you with me, and I love to read your comments and hear your feedback. Ah, oh, thank you, Christine. So good to see you. <laughs> I had so much fun. This is a fun technique. Like I said, look at your stamps in a different way. As long as you have nice, good, solid lines on your stamps, you can totally use the reinker spread. You can do it for animals, um, ice creams, you name it, anything that you want to color, uh, watercolor, and I love the two-tone effect. I mean, I only used one color in my reinker spread technique. I used pecan pie, but look at the different shading. So fun. I love techniques, and I love joining you here and sharing them with you. So if you are interested in our club, reach out to Christine if you're in the United States, Christine Bertram. Look her up online, Cards by Christine. Or if you're in Canada, you can reach out to myself, Rose Coleman. You can find me at www.rosecoleman.com. It's easy, easy peasy. And I'd love to add you to our club for coming up. Uh, I don't have the cards to show you, but they're coming along just nicely. And we're going to be playing with a technique in May for our technique club called the Tissue Paper Technique. So I can't wait to share those cards with you next month. So be a part of it. Join our club and um, we will get you started on learning some new techniques. All right. Take care, everyone. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you hopefully soon. Bye-bye.